This video helps to illustrate the self-study guide Crossing at Modern Signals at www.saueerburger.org forward slash dona forward slash signal. It shows the results of actuation and the need for pedestrians to inform the signal controller of their presence by pressing the pedestrian button. Basically, with actuation, the controller changes the pattern or timing of the signal based on the presence or absence of vehicles or pedestrians detected in certain lanes or crosswalks and wanting to cross the intersection. This is illustrated nicely at this T intersection where the major street is four lanes wide plus a left turning lane for traffic turning into the minor street. The signal is actuated by vehicles and pedestrians from the minor street as well as vehicles in the lane designated to turn left from the major street. So let's see what happens. When this car pulled up on the minor street, the light for the major street had been green for only 15 seconds, so the car must wait until the traffic on the major street has had its minimum of about 30 seconds of green before the traffic on the minor street can have its turn. The light turns green for the minor street now. Now the car leaves the minor street and three seconds later the light turns yellow, a total of seven seconds of green plus five seconds of yellow or 12 seconds from green to red for the minor street. There are no vehicles on the major street waiting to turn left into the minor street so the light on the major street is green for all vehicles. Oh, this should be interesting. Now there are two cars waiting on the minor street. Will that double the time it gets the green light? The light changes to green for them now. And oops, a third car has joined the party just in time to be detected. So the light stays green until three seconds after he leaves the minor street, making a total of 13 seconds of green, almost twice as long as the last time. This time there were cars waiting in the left turn lane on the major street, so after the traffic on the minor street had its turn, the controller gave a green arrow for those cars to turn left, and a green arrow for drivers from the minor street to turn right. Here's our next scenario, and we have three cars waiting, and their light turns green now. Oh, a fourth car joins the parade. You can probably guess by now. The light stays green until exactly three seconds after the last car leaves the minor street for a total of 16 seconds of green. And again, there were some cars waiting in the left turn lane, so as soon as the minor street gets the red light, these left turning cars get their green arrow and turn left. Now that you've seen what happens with vehicles, let's think about the pedestrians. In the first scenario, with a single car waiting, if a pedestrian walking at an average speed had started to cross when that car had surged into the intersection, she would have just barely reached the middle before her light was already red. Even if she had entered the street the instant the light changed to green, she still would have had another lane to cross by the time her light changed to red. Fortunately, the controller has her back and will give her the time she needs to cross if she will inform the controller that she's there by pushing the pedestrian button as I'm doing here. Let's see what happens. The walk signal comes on now. The clearance interval with the flashing don't walk starts now. If this is timed right, the clearance interval should be 17 seconds long so that the pedestrians who started before it began flashing would be able to walk at 3.5 feet per second across the entire 60-foot crosswalk before the major street gets the green light. And hey, <laughs> the engineer should be proud. If we include the yellow light for the vehicles, the clearance interval was just over 17 seconds long. Well, that was fun. But before we finish, I just want to show you something. A neighbor told me that sometimes the walk signal to cross the minor street comes on several times before the traffic on the minor street gets their green light. If you are sitting in your car on Cadbury Avenue, which is perpendicular to seven locks here, it will go through two walking signs before you can, the traffic, traffic light will change. 
so two, long two sitting cycles, in meaning it will show the person walk, can walk twice. Show, shows the person can walk, and then it has a countdown, and then it shows the person can walk again. Correct. There are several reasons that this typically happens with actuation. One is that there is enough time for several pedestrian phases while the major street has its minimum time for green, which in this situation is only 30 seconds, but the major street may be programmed to get longer minimum time during rush hour. The other is that pedestrians may get their walk signal to cross the minor street whenever requested as long as there is no one detected wanting to cross the major street. So let's see what happens when that walk signal to cross the minor street is on and a car pulls up on the minor street. Aha! Immediately the flash don't walk starts, letting pedestrians know that it's too late to start crossing the minor street because the light is about to change. As soon as the clearance interval is finished, the vehicle from the minor street gets the green light. As always, the green light lasts only three seconds after the driver enters the intersection for a total of six seconds of green, plus a yellow light for five seconds, or only 11 seconds before the major street gets the green light again. All right. You've seen actuation at an intersection that gives left turning traffic from one direction a green arrow, or what is called protected left phasing, before the opposing traffic gets its green light. Now let's take a look at a street that has protected left phasing, which is actuated from both directions. We are standing beside Leonardtown Road with an intersection in front of us. If there are vehicles waiting in the left turn lanes from both directions when Leonardtown gets its turn, they get green arrows to turn left, and all straight through vehicles wait. You'll notice that in each of these examples, about four seconds after the last vehicle leaves either of the left turning lanes, the opposing straight through traffic gets its green light. In this instance, there are vehicles from the east waiting in the left turning lanes, but none coming from the west. So all the traffic coming from the east gets a green arrow to turn left or a green light to go straight while everyone from the west waits. Here's an example of the opposite. There are vehicles from the west waiting to turn left, but none from the east, and as you can guess, all the vehicles from the west are allowed to enter the intersection while all vehicles from the east have to wait. Ooh, now we'll see what happens when a vehicle from the west pulls up in the left turning lane just before Leonardtown gets its turn. Oh, bummer! Apparently it showed up too late to be detected in time to get a green arrow, so the driver has to wait with the rest of the traffic from that direction. Well, we have shown you some examples of actuation and its effect on traffic and pedestrians. For more information, see the self-study guide, Crossing at Modern Signals, at www.saueerburger.org forward slash d-o-n-a forward slash signal.